All right, guys, Michael with Juggernaut Welding and Fabrication. Um, today, we're going to go over welding a cast piece. Uh, this customer has a backing plate for his semi, and it is European, so he can't uh, get the part. It's not readily available. So I'm going to go ahead and repair it today. We're using 312 stainless rod. Um, I've had really good luck with it. We're going to do a little preheat. Um, I've already got it stitched together. And what I did was started off, cleaned out the crack really well with wire wheel and acetone, uh, and then took a two inch roll lock, cleaned up the surface uh, to get past all that porous material. You want it nice and smooth and shiny. Um, I V'd out the front side. And I didn't think of making a video until after, but I've already got the front side welded up. We're going to go ahead and TIG weld the back side. It's still pretty warm, but it's been sitting for a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little more heat into it with my torch. So give me a second here. Get our torch fired up. Excuse the messy shop. There's always something going on in here. So I'm just using a propane torch. We're going to evenly heat this up. Um, I've done it so many times that I just kind of know how much heat it takes. But uh, if you were to heat it up, and I would say get it around 350, um, that's going to relieve any stress in the material. Cast has a ton of grap or a, a ton of carbon in it, so. If you weld on this or braze it and let it cool too quickly, it's going to crack. Um, <clears throat> I've had best luck preheating, and then what I do is I wrap it in a little bit of uh, ceramic wool afterwards. Um, uh, I use it like in my forge. You can order it on Amazon, I'm pretty sure, but... Um, it's just ceramic wool is what it's called. And uh, we'll wrap it up afterwards and let it cool. And, and wrapped up in that ceramic wool, it'll take hours for this to cool completely down. And that's what you want. You, you don't want it to cool too quickly. Like I said, uh, it was still pretty hot. So I think we're good there. So like I said, again, 312 stainless. Um, sometimes it depends on the cast. Uh, sometimes I'll use nickel, 99% uh, nickel. Sometimes I use silicon bronze. Um, but this stuff is really good cast. So I figured I'd try my 312 at it and it's taking it beautifully. So I've got my, I've got my argon turned on. I've got it turned up to about 30 CFH. Uh, I'm using my Everlast 255 EXT. Um, I rep Everlast Hardcore because they are the shit and their customer service is top notch. Um, so here we go. I've got a Furic number 10 cup. Uh, you want good gas coverage. So here we go. I'm using my pulse right now. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. Feeding my filler rod. And you'll see, anytime you're welding with stainless, you want to form your puddle within one to two seconds. I mean, you want it to form quickly. Get your heat in there real quick. Most people are afraid of overheating stainless, which you, you definitely don't want to do. But the common mistake is people will not run enough heat and travel super slow, and that ends up putting more heat input into it in the end. So you're better off getting in there hot, moving as, you know, as quick as you can. I think I'm running about I don't know 120 amps right now this is about eighth inch thick you could 
try 309. Um, I've had good luck with it welding dissimilar metals. You know, say I'm trying to weld mild steel to stainless or mild steel to cast. I'll use my 309. You can also use 312. But I'm just used to the using the 309. They usually save the 312 for cast pieces. And you know, if you were stacking dimes on a clean piece of stainless, that's one thing. Uh, on cast, you're not going to get a perfect finish. I'm going to move my, my TIG finger over here, or version of a TIG finger. Um, that really helps so you're not burning the hell out of your hand that you're resting. They are nice. Um, I think this one is a black stallion or something. I got it at the local welding supply. But essentially the same thing it's just protects your hand from the heat now I'm making sure to fill this portion of it really well this edge is going to heat up much quicker than the rest and you're going to you know, it's going to want to give you some undercut. So back off your amperage there at the edge. Um, let your gas flow, your post flow, flow for, you know, 10 seconds afterwards or whatever. But you can see, I mean, it's not as pretty as welding on a uh, brand new clean piece of stainless. But it didn't come out bad. Um, let me run and grab some ceramic wool and I'll show you um, what I'm talking about. You can tell I've used this stuff quite a few times over the years. Um, and what I'm gonna do Stuff can be a little itchy if if you uh, get it all over your hands. But what I'm going to do is try to wrap both sides of that, right? I'm just going to wrap it up. If it were a goofy-shaped piece or something, you could wrap some tie wire or something. But uh, you can see I welded up the front side already. Uh, that one I V'd out pretty good, welded, uh, welded it up. Um if you're getting dull gray colors, uh, you're too hot. If, if you got kind of the rainbowish colors and it's shiny, you know, you're, you're not too hot. You know, perfect stainless weld would be colorless, be like a, it's just, I mean, pure silver or a wheat color. But on cast, again, um, it's really hard to get that finish with cast. This is some of the best cast I've welded. Um, it's actually allowing me to, to get some decent pen penetration. Normally it's, it's very porous and it'll kind of want to, it'll have air pockets, almost like a sponge. So normally you want to TIG braze it where you're not actually melting the parent material. You're just basically flashing over and getting enough heat to melt your silicon bronze or your nickel, whatever, making a nice puddle over it, and it is using surface tension to hold that joint together instead of actually welding the parent material. You could see with this cast, I was able to get some decent penetration um, without any of that porous, nasty crap. Um, again, 312 stainless filler rod, uh, this one is a sixteenth thick uh, or diameter, I think, but you can get it in any size. Uh, 
Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this helps you out a little bit.